One of the things we really wanted in this building was if you'd been in EBA before, it was cave-like. You can see one of the things we really wanted to do was to put, bring science to the light, right? Science isn't something that happens behind closed doors. It's something that happens out in the open. Let's head down the grand stair, and actually I'm going to take us down to the bottom. It's because there's still more work going on there. We'll work our way up to the top, which is the most finished spaces. This is going to be one of the breakout spaces, and you'll see areas designed throughout the building where right now the furniture isn't maybe there, but they're going to be breakout and study spaces where students talking, let's say someone from Dr. Speck's lab will be talking with someone from Dr. Fusen's lab, and they'll come and they'll meet out here and talk about research. Or I'll come down here and be like, you know what, my office is too small, we're going to have a whiteboard there, I bring eight students down, and we start having a brainstorming session about substitution reactions in the organic lab. So that's one of the things that it's um, an advantage of a, of a remodel is that you get some quirky fun spaces like that and you'll see them sprinkled throughout the building. NMR is nuclear magnetic resonance. It's um, an MRI for molecules. And so you learn about molecular structure using the NMR, and you can see it's built down into the ground. It's echoey. We have these concrete walls. Um, this is a 400 megahertz. Well, it will be after Brian gets done setting it up. It will be a 400 megahertz um, spectrometer. And so it's a big magnet. And so when you've got a big magnet, you don't want moving metal really close to it. So the center of the magnet's 14 feet below ground. I think of this as our most tricked out classroom. We really are excited. I mean, it's very, I mean, when we talk about being modular, even in the classroom and creative and expiring spaces, these tables right now, they're set up as to be able to be put in a line, but watch this. Pull these apart, put them together, and now you've got a hexagon. You can get anywhere from three to six students around there. Looks like a benzene ring, I like that. We'll head upstairs and I'll take you up through the last staircase of the building that actually should look very familiar to some of you. I um, am fond of this stairwell now. It hasn't changed much. And so it's a, a little bit of a window to the past of the building. Dr. Joe and Dr. Fantini do synthetic organic work, and so they require hoods. Remember those hoods we were talking about downstairs for working with volatile organic chemicals? They needed eight hoods, and, and they wanted a shared space. You can imagine that that would really cut the space up and eliminate sight lines. And so we have these glass back hoods. I love that. I mean, it's the idea that people will be talking to each other basically through the back of the hood while they're and working at the same time. So they add great sight lines through here. organic chemistry lab. That lab used to be about two-thirds the size of this and it had high shelves and so it was one of the worst labs for sight lines. We had five hoods for 30 people and so we have in here um, 14 hoods. There's a new word in the campus vernacular that I have heard about, or two, e-bossum and e-bomb. <laughs>